Today, we're going to answer the question, what is a desktop environment? As some of us are new to Linux and or may not have the best understanding of what a desktop environment is, I'll spend some time today explaining and covering some questions, including how many and what desktop environments exist, which are some of the more popular ones, and what features desktop environments actually include. In order to start out, I want to actually draw out a little bit of the Linux system and how you interact through the Linux operating system down to your hardware, because it's important to understand what spaces we have in between you and the hardware because it sheds a light on why the desktop environment is an important part of Linux and any operating system at that. First off, we have what's called the kernel space. Some of you may be familiar, but this is actually what Linux is. When people say Linux, they're actually referring to the Linux kernel or Linux kernel space. This layer is used by the operating system in order to communicate to access and interact with your hardware. So we'll draw another layer right below, and that is going to be your hardware. So we get a a good understanding of how these work together. These two communicate. Of course, in this layer here, we have things like the CPU, memory, GPU, so on and so forth. That's not what we're focusing on. Instead, we want to focus on a couple layers above the kernel. Another layer that we have is something called user or user space, which is also a key part of the operating system where user applications and processes run. It's separated from the kernel space, and you can imagine this is where a desktop environment exists and runs entirely in user space. So we can depict this as having a desktop environment on top of the user space, on top of the kernel, on top of your hardware. So now that we know the layout and kind of interaction on how all this fits together, we can talk about the Linux desktop environment itself and why it's so important. Well, that's because it's the initial experience, look and feel that the user will interact with when first loading up their system. The desktop environment is really a package on top of many other system components as shown here. Again, let's just call this a package of components. It typically provide some of the basic tools and functions to do things like change system settings, resolution, navigate the system, access an application store so you can install more applications, and much more. It's really a graphical user interface for the operating system that provides a user-friendly way to interact with the system. So now you understand how important the desktop environment is and what it is, but let's talk about varying different desktop environments because you may be asking yourself, well, I've used Windows or Mac OS in the past, and don't those have desktop environments as well? Well, they do, but there's a big difference between the way that Mac OS and Windows brings desktop environments to you and how Linux brings the desktop to you. So the biggest difference here is that there's really one option that's pushed to you on both of these operating system. They have one option as their official desktop experience, and there's really no other choices. Yes, you can get varying different ones between the different versions of Windows. For example, you know, Windows 7 versus 10 or even 11 have a different desktop experience for the user. Very similar to Mac OS, but Mac OS I'd say is even more stringent and really only offers one desktop experience that gets just slowly and incrementally updated through its versions as well. So think Sierra versus Big Sur or Ventura. These are not quite as drastically changed as you would find between 7, 10, and 11, but they do have changes. Again, one desktop experience that fundamentally doesn't change too much, whereas Linux has many, many choices and oftentimes can be overwhelming, but overall, they are more user-centric and customizable, which people love. The Linux desktop environment wiki gives us a preview in just some of the popular desktops, including KDE Plasma, LXQ, Gnome, XFCE, Mate, and of course others. Those are some of the more popular ones. And with this many choices, it really allows us to, to further tune and theme our own unique sense of the desktop environment so that our operating systems have its own unique look and feel. For example, there are many distributions that use Gnome as their default desktop environment. You can see that Gnome wildly varies as this looks like Ubuntu's variant, or for example, XFCE, which you'll Notice pretty much right away that things like the theming, icon sets, default programs, and layout, meaning the places where they actually put menus and, and docs can be completely different from each other. And this is all really up to the distribution maintainers to make these decisions as they build upon desktop environments to create their own interface for the users that use their distributions. Meaning not only do we have all these options like Budgie, Cinnamon, Deepin, Enlightenment, Gnome, KDE, LXDE, LXQt, Mate, Pantheon, Unity, and XFCE. There are many, many other ones available 
but distribution maintainers will actually go additionally theme and add their own programs on top of what already exists in the desktop environment. So just to give you an example, what's known as the vanilla version of XFCE can look much different than a themed version customized for a different operating system. For example, here's Manjaro Linux with someone's own theme and support built on top of XFCE. That's why these Linux desktop environments are so powerful with their own unique look, feel. And you might be asking yourself, why do so many desktop desktop environments exist. Well, let's get back to talking about that. But before we get it further into things, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe below for more videos like this. But we've officially established that there are many different desktop environments available here, including some of the ones that we list listed like XFCE, GNOME, a new one coming out from System76's team, Cosmic, KDE Plasma, and many, many more. Okay, so now that we know some that exist and the differences between the varying different operating systems when it comes to desktop, environments and we kind of get an idea of what the desktop environment is let's explore it further by talking about it as a package earlier i referred to the linux desktop environment as a package so now i'm going to get into why I call it a package and that's because it's easier to think about this in a linux system as a package than anything else something that contains and interchanges many different components and is really installed much like an application you can really do the same thing or even switch desktop environments like installing or downloading a package. So let's talk about some of the features and components of a desktop environment. Well, one of the main ones to start out is something known as a window manager. So what does the window manager do? Well, it really manages your application windows, go figure, but it keeps track of things like sessions and how many windows that you have open and for the individual applications that are using windows and manages their lifespan, the current status and updates that they need. And of course, what state that they're currently in. So these are just some of the small things that window managers do, and they're part of this desktop environment package as well. Now, there are some exceptions where window managers do even more than just manage windows, including managing things like sound and the rest of the shell, but we're not gonna get into those today. Instead, we're gonna focus on another big portion, which I like to call the user application experience, or just user app for short. Typically, a desktop environment comes with a set of prepackaged programs or applications that help us further interact with the system, including things like a file manager or browser that allows us to explore the system. We have a settings app that allows us to change out settings, including resolution or wallpaper, etc. We have an app store that allows us to get additional packages, programs, or applications, some sort of a basic editor or basic text editor so we can edit files and make changes to documentation. Things like a basic photo or video viewer can be part of the user app side, making the system easier to use through a desktop environment. We have things like calculators that you can think of too, or even system trays, docs, etc. You can think of these as just easy access points on the desktop environment or shell itself. Another important virtualized system is what's known as workspaces. Now, some desktop environments have these, others don't, but really it's just a virtual environment that's built on top of the desktop to help manage multiple desktop sessions so you can use and manage your workflow better. Let's say you're doing two different tasks and you want to keep your desktop clean, well, Workspaces is a great way to do this. We finally have something called theming, and this is important because this further customizes a Linux distribution so that it has its own unique look feel. Examples of this include things like customizing the icon sets, customizing the color, setting borders and unique identifiers, basically just overall contributing to the uniqueness of the look and feel for the overall system. For example, we talked earlier about a vanilla desktop is the absolute base desktop that you can use and then you can build upon. So for example, XFCE, offers something very much like this with a default wallpaper, a progress and system tray, a dock, and default programs. But many other distributions will spend time and completely customize the environment itself. So for example, in this here, this is still the XFCE desktop environment as its source. And you can check that out by looking right here. It says the default desktop environment is XFCE 
version 4. Now, you can tell it looks much different than what we saw a moment ago, the vanilla version. That's because this user is using Manjaro and they've themed it themselves. So they've changed icon sets around. They changed color themes around. Even what programs and how the display up top appears. This is much different than the vanilla XFCE and it shows you the unique capability of a Linux desktop environment and how you can go and customize it to your own look and feel. It makes for a much much more user-centric and customizable experience. That's why we have so many different desktop environments available. A lot of Linux distributions like to further tune and theme already existing desktop environments so that they can give their own operating system a unique look feel in which they think is best for the user. Another very important thing to talk about away from preference and customization is resource usage. This is another reason why so many different desktops exist. Outside of the customization and flexibility of these desktop environments, there's a huge focus on optimizing resource usage. There are really a few camps in different what I call weights of Linux environments. We're just going to talk about two basic camps today, lightweight versus heavy or medium weight. Let's just call it heavyweight for now. And in these two camps, there are different philosophies that pertain to the performance resource usage and the varying different utilities that they offer. Just for example's sake, I'm going to put a few underneath each category, including XFCE being lightweight, LX, QT or LX Qt and open box underneath the lightweight. There are ultra lightweight desktop environments that we're not going to be talking about because they're not used as much as the lightweight or heavyweight ones. For example, in the heavyweight category, we can probably consider GNOME to be under this category and KDE Plasma. Now, what differentiates between lightweight and heavyweight? Well, it's really the way that they plan on optimizing for resource usage. These three lightweights are designed to basically just use minimal resources resources, aka less amount of CPU, memory, GPU, and storage space in order to run more smoothly on older or less powerful hardware. So a lot of these lightweights consider resource usage in mind, whereas other ones in the heavyweight category feature more visual effects and have more features, including ones that require more resources, which may or may not provide more customization and would require more powerful hardware, therefore being a heavier load on the system. Now with these two categories, Categories. Again, we'll just go through a few of the focuses on these varying different desktop environments. Here we're focused more on the minimal resource usage is typically meant for older systems or for users who really want to get the most out of their resources instead of spending it on the desktop environment. But there is a different option here. I'm going to call this optimization. But again, a different option would be to go with a headless or server edition of a distribution that offers no desktop environment. That's right. You can use an ultra lightweight version specifically designed for servers in which you have no graphical user interface to interact with at all. Instead, everything is done through a console. This is as minimal as you can get when it comes to a system. The only way you're going to get more minimal than this is to start auditing the packages and storage space that exists on your system. This is one example of Ubuntu server, but there are many other distributions that offer server editions that can accomplish the same thing. Anyways, on to the opposite side here where these two typically offer more features. Animations are more modern because they can use visual effects that require more resources and can offer more customization just because there's more offering with the desktop environment itself. Now between lightweight and heavyweight and which ones you decide to use depend on a varying amount of factors including which Linux distribution you choose. You're either going to get a lightweight one or you're going to get a heavyweight one. You can of course change this but the choice is kind of made for you whenever you choose a Linux distribution. So it's going to be up to the user needs including what hardware capability you have, what personal preferences you have. Do you want to focus on optimizing resources? Do you want to focus on being able to customize stuff? Do you want a more modern tailored experience? All these questions come into play when choosing which optimal Linux desktop environment and experience you want. Hopefully this video helped you understand what a Linux desktop environment is. If it did, don't forget to smash that like button for me. I want to know what you're using in the comments section below, so make sure you let me know. I want to let you know at the beginning of the video, we mentioned a kernel and we call Called Linux the kernel. Well, if you want to know more in depth what that actually means and what a kernel is, because it does exist across Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, well, check out my video on what a kernel is. I'll post a link in the description below. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, 
and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.